Gasparini and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I am joined today by Lisa Goldman, who's going to talk about her very interesting journey and, and also the Bonnie Giordario Lung Cancer Foundation. Lisa, welcome. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for coming on this program. Um, so you were diagnosed with lung cancer how many years ago? About three years ago. And what was that day like? What brought you there? Uh, it was surreal. I had been a fitness instructor for seven years and I had taught a spin class just a few weeks prior but I had this nagging cough that I'd been going to the doctor for months and I'd been prescribed antibiotics and asthma medication and allergy meds and finally steroids and nothing was working and well, of course you couldn't have lung cancer you're way too young and right. you just look healthy and vibrant and um Right. Whether or not had, somebody asked you if you smoked or not. So, of course, you don't have lung cancer. You have allergies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I had no known risk factors. And so they, nobody ever thought to do a chest CT until I was uh, really falling apart. And I took myself to a uh, pulmonologist who sent me for the chest CT. And when he got those back, I appreciate now how bad they were. But at the time, he just said, oh, you know, we need to do a biopsy, but he downplayed, in fact, he told me it's not likely cancer. And I thought, cancer? Well, who was even thinking of that? I have first? allergies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I went into the biopsy a few days later, not really panicking, thinking this was something, some other, they, get, they told me it could be um, sarcoidosis, which it was not. I, and so I woke up in the hospital on oxygen and with a partially collapsed lung and to the news that I had stage four lung cancer. And, and how old were you at the time of diagnosis? I was 41. Okay. Not that we're revealing your age on television. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Lisa, That's but fine. I think it's important for people to understand that um, we typically get this vision in our mind of what someone um, looks like mm -hmm. um, when they are diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. So we right. just want to ensure that people understand that um, this is the face of lung cancer. Yeah. Um, so from that point, what happened? I mean, you've been given sort of this news about right. something you've never thought about, well, ever. So it was so dire at that point, I was then ushered into intensive care for a week. I didn't leave the hospital for a week, and they started chemotherapy within uh, a little more than 24 hours later. Uh, it was that. Fast. Fast. That was that fast. There was no time for second opinions or research or, or anything. Even thought about the diagnosis, yeah, it was right? just I mean, like get chemo tomorrow or uh, don't be here <laughs> next week. You know, it was right. so chemo. So we did chemo, and I stayed on chemo for eight months after that before switching to my targeted therapy that I'm on now. So then you um, got better. Um, you were sort of stable, mm -hmm. and now I'm sure you're working with your pulmonologist and oncologist saying, here's our plan of attack. Mm -hmm. So from that point, you then somehow found mm -hmm. the Bonnie Giordario Lung Cancer Foundation. So where was that gap? Who, how did you find the organization? Then tell us a little bit about what happened after meeting the foundation. So I found the foundation pretty quickly. I mean, word went out. I was public from the get-go with my diagnosis, so we started... Uh, you know, an email list and and broadcast it to our whole community. People were bringing, you know, casseroles to the door, the whole thing. And uh, people were also constantly emailing us with ideas. Oh, go see this doctor, or did you hear about, you know, drink baking soda, like nonsense and useful right. stuff. And amongst all of that was somebody said, have you heard of Bonnie Adari, the Bonnie Adario Lung Cancer Foundation? And so as I'm sifting through this, it was probably about, six weeks after my diagnosis, maybe eight, pretty quickly, I gave a call. I just um, called, left a message at the Bonnie Odario Foundation. The info line. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't know who I was calling. What it was, I wasn't expecting a call back particularly quickly. I didn't, I, I didn't even have my head on straight at the time. And to my surprise, on a weekend, I got a call back from Bonnie herself. <laughs> And, um, and she spent like an hour on the phone talking me through what things, what questions I needed to ask my doctor, what I needed to be thinking about. And then we set up an appointment and we went out to lunch a few weeks after that. And from there on, I've been pretty close with Bonnie and the foundation. Well, and if I, if I may, I'd like to step back just to one second and, and just um, give our viewers a bit of background that Bonnie is, I think about a 12 or 13 year um, survivor today of lung cancer. She was diagnosed with stage 3B 
um, and was given sort of the, you have 90 days, um, get your affairs in order, mm -hmm. um, and felt that that wasn't going to be um, her story. Mm -hmm. And obviously now founding a, a lung cancer organization, patient-centric, to help mm -hmm. Um, patients like you as well as a research organization. There's something that you said in the beginning and I want to make sure that our our viewers pick it up and that was you were public with your diagnosis from the beginning. Mm -hmm. We find that a lot of people that are diagnosed with lung cancer don't want to be public because the stigma still remains right. you must have been a smoker. If you were a smoker perhaps you didn't want people to know you were right. and if you're not a smoker you don't want people to assume that you were right. because you're not. So. I'm so very proud of you for coming and saying, look, I'm the face of lung cancer, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to advance the conversation mm -hmm. so that we can make this a managed, a managed disease in the yeah. long run. So let's talk now about, you found the um, Adario Lung Cancer Foundation. You've got a great medical team. Mm -hmm. Now you've got a great organization that's helping you mm -hmm. as a person that's been diagnosed with lung cancer and how you manage this crazy world, because there's a lot of info out there there's a lot of things that you've probably learned. Mm -hmm. What are some of those advice points that you're gonna give to folks and that you've learned from mm -hmm. the foundation? Well, what I really appreciate about the foundation where it's been super useful to me is that when I spoke with Bonnie or with other people at the organization later on, the advice I got was very specific. I would tell them, this is what my doctor said to me, what do I need to do next? And they would say, this doctor in Colorado knows exactly about that, or go see this guy at UCSF, or what. It wasn't just general, like these are, you can go on websites and it says, ask your, qu your doctor these 10 questions, right. or that's, and that, that's somewhat helpful, but the very specific conversations I had were invaluable. I mean, it was like having a specialist on my speed dial. Right. I mean, I think you probably learned early on that not all physicians know about every different molecular type of cancer. Um, it's an ever-evolving, never-changing world mm -hmm. in the world of lung cancer, which is the great news. Um, so they're sort of guiding you along and, and part of your care team, along with your medical professional, saying, let's try this, let's have a conversation about this. Right. Can you go back and ask this question? Kind of giving you also, too, I think, reassurance that you're on the right track. Right. Which is a great confidence builder mm -hmm. in someone where there's so much information yeah. out there. I mean, everybody is constantly telling me, you got to advocate for yourself. you got to advocate for yourself. But you also, this is a, a tightrope that I, as a patient, feel like I'm constantly walking, which is when you go into the doctor, you can't advocate and be adversarial all the time. I mean, this is someone that you want to be on, on your, your side, side right and and like you and work cooperatively and collaboratively so you can't always be on the attack you can ask questions you can be thorough but um, I, you know the Bonnie Dari Foundation really helped me navigate that a little bit when do I push when do I need a second opinion when am I on track that kind of thing so I'd never because I'd never been a patient with any kind of serious I didn't I'd never even had allergies before or right. asthma or anything so I went for like not even an annual check. I didn't know how to navigate this new world. So um, tell us about your lung cancer type, your molecular type, mm -hmm. and then that's also led you into a path with the Adario Foundation through mm -hmm. the Ross One project. Right. I found out, I started chemo so quickly, I didn't have time to find out uh, my genetic, the, the genetic makeup, makeup or driver of, your... of my cancer, which uh, I, I did get lucky. I was at a hospital that did do that testing automatically, but it didn't come back until um, I think right around the time of my second infusion. So by that time, the doctor said, since I was already on the chemo track to stay the course until that stopped being effective and then mm -hmm. uh, see what I could do with my mutation. Um, so I knew pretty early on that I tested positive for something called ROS1. Um, but it didn't become relevant or uh, critical to the treatment course until about eight months in. So um, now with that Ross One project, um, and I should mention that it's patient-centric, right. patient-focused, patient-forward. You are driving the conversation. Mm -hmm. When you go to conferences, you are at the table. That's right. one of Bonnie's greatest mantras, is the patient is at the table. We hear all the time from the scientists, but they're not the one being poked and prodded and, right. <laughs> and, 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 and the one living the results. So right. I, I love the fact that that's what the focus for the Ross One project is. So 
um, we are out of time, but we're oh. gonna we're gonna close with what's that one thing that um, the Bonnie J Adario Lung Cancer Foundation has brought to you as this patient navigating lung cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's hard to narrow down to one thing. I mean, I've mentioned before that I feel like I have a specialist and kind of, you know, a trusted friend in my back pocket with this organization, even though, you know, I just met them, or now I have years of relationship. But even from the get-go, it felt like somebody I could call any hour of the day kind of thing. Um, and the other thing is really that, that patient-centric and research-centric focus. So when I knew that I needed more research on ROS1 to get another treatment, the foundation was the first place I called and said, look, we've got a bunch of patients we've gathered as a group, and now what's the next step? How do we get researchers working on us, collecting samples, developing new medicines for us? What do we do? And hand in hand, we've worked together and gotten a survey going, and we're getting more research started, hopefully, in the next few months. So I'm really, um, I mean, I'm profoundly grateful to the organization for right. that and just really impressive ha with how we've been able to work together and leverage both of our strengths as from the patient perspective and from the professional. And I just want to end with, um, there's a way in which people can ensure that the Bonnie J. Adario Lung Cancer Foundation's mm -hmm. reach um, continues to grow and, um, and continues to um, touch patient lives. And that is through Giving Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We all know about Black Friday. Right and we're all gonna go shopping on Black Friday. But I feel the way in which you recover from spending money mm -hmm. on Black Friday is by giving on Tuesday. Right. Giving Tuesday's become a phenomenal in this United States, and I think it's a great thing to say, let's give of ourselves um, and participate, and the Bonnie J. Adario Lung Cancer Foundation is participating in Giving Tuesday. They're one of the organizations that anyone can give throughout the United States and say, I want to give money to support mm -hmm. programs that have helped people like Lisa. I think it's it's the perfect place to donate your, your Giving Tuesday funds because lung cancer is the number one cancer killer in the world. It's one of the lowest funded and this organization makes the do makes really good use of the dollars. It doesn't just do advocacy work. It doesn't just do patient support work. It actually does research and is making a change in survival rates. Yeah. Well, I've, if that's not a great reason to give on Giving Tuesday <laughs> this November, then I don't know what is. Lisa, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And I encourage every one of you as viewers, get on your computers and give on Giving Tuesday and give um, to your local organizations, such as the Bonnie Giadario Lung Cancer Foundation. Thanks so much, all of you, for joining us on Penn Voice, and we'll see you next time.